welcome back. This video has been a long time coming. Let's talk about AI art. I've heard too many of you losing motivation because of it, and I don't believe there's a valid reason to, despite how impressive AI technology might seem. So in this week's YouTube Art School class, I specifically want to cover the very serious problems with AI art, let you know my stance on the topic and my predictions for the future for us all artists. Very deep stuff. Oh heck, quickly class is starting, we're gonna be late. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. AI art has been getting exponentially better this year and understandably, a lot of you I'm sure are worried about it. I've been following its development and its impact on the art community that I love very closely over the last year and finally I felt like it was time to make a video about it. AI art, for those of you who are hearing this term for the first time, is basically art made by prompt-based image generators such as Midjourney, Lensa AI and Stable Diffusion to name only a few. And while this might sound cool, it's led to displays like this on ArtStation. Clearly the art community is not happy, so what gives? Let me try to explain why. Now these image generators can be used by anyone, artists or not. All you have to do is request an image using a few words and the AI will do its best to deliver that image. Real quick too, AIs improve over time and they've gotten really good at generating beautiful images. The quality of the art has been improving quickly and the prompts to generate these images are getting simpler and simpler. It's already at a point where it could be described as too easy. It might sound great at first, an actual real like make art button like we've always joked about. But when something seems too good to be true, there's usually more to the story. It's certainly the case here. How the AI is able to do this in the first place is really at the core of most of the problems now. So let's start with the biggest issue, how these AIs were trained to do what they do. AIs, just like dogs, need a lot of training to learn to do new tricks. Way more training than dogs, actually. I'm simplifying this a lot, but basically the AI learns and improves by example. You show it examples of art that you want it to reproduce, text descriptions, a ton of it, and guide it as to what is desirable and what isn't. Over many iterations, it gets good at recreating beautiful art, just like a pet learns to more accurately follow commands as you repeat them over and over. AIs only develop at an acceptable pace if they have a lot of examples though, as in billions of examples. The database called the Lion 5B database, on which most of these AIs were trained, contains 5.8 billion text and image data scraped from the internet. An insane amount. And in this case, the vast majority of all the art that was used to train these AIs were taken without permission by unscrupulous programmers from artists all around the world without their consent. And without compensation taken from you and me. I'm not gonna say it's art theft, but it sure smells like art theft to me. In my mind, just like that of a huge segment of the art community, this is the main issue with AI generators. Had it been trained on voluntarily submitted or paid art or public domain art like it should have been, AI art would likely suck so bad compared to what it is now that nobody would pay serious attention to it. It would never be considered as more of a tool in some specific applications. Instead, it got good fast off the backs of unknowing artists and now these companies are raking in tons of cash selling their AI services to everyone they can. I'll admit though, it's crazy impressive. As a technology, it's fascinating, kind of similar to cloning people. It's crazy what we're capable of. I can see many valid ways this could be integrated in artist workflows, but I'll get to that later. As it is now, and until they retrain their AIs from scratch using only voluntary submissions and public domain images, using Midjourney or Stable Diffusion is the equivalent of shopping at a used car shop where you know that all the inventory was likely built from stolen car parts. Car parts stolen from your neighbor's car. From a moral standpoint, everything about this is wrong in my opinion. Now, I want to take some time to go over five of the more common arguments that I've heard either for or against AI art and offer, hopefully, a better perspective. Then again, 
I'm just some bald professional artist guy teaching art on YouTube. So um, all of this is just my opinion and I'm happy to read your comments and hear you out if you think differently. I'm personally not against the technology. I welcome it, but I'm against the way that it was implemented and the negative impact that it could have on current and future generations of artists if you don't come together and set some boundaries. I'm sure everyone agrees that cloning people is a cool technology, but it's been made illegal because of its potential negative consequences on humanity. I place AI art in a similar category. So the first thing on the list is what makes me the saddest. When I hear some of you saying that they're giving up on art because AI art is too good, that it's much better than you'll ever be, so there's no point in practicing or aiming to be an artist. I don't think anyone should think this way because even without AI, that's always been the case. There's always going to be someone who's better than you. That's what makes art so fascinating. We keep getting better at it. There's always someone we can learn from, however good we get. We all pursue art for the joy of it, despite you know all the pains and the failure. There's no better feeling than getting better at something and noticing growth within ourselves. We use art to express ourselves as conscious beings to connect with others. Art is nothing without that human connection that it enables. And before I continue with the rest of the list, I just want to take a second and mention the massive Christmas sale I have going on in my store on all of my courses, including, of course, the art Art School for Digital Artists program that will be running until the end of the month only. Like with previous years, it's the biggest discount of the year. I hope it helps you pick up something that you might have had your eyes on. Happy holidays. Now back to the video. The next argument against AI is that it'll take all the art jobs, that it's too fast to compete against. Therefore, there's no future for artists. No point in pursuing art as a career anymore. And I couldn't disagree more. Studios won't replace artists. They'll likely use AI as a new tool within their pipeline. But I think a lot of you don't realize that humans are much better at certain things and will always be. Concept art is a good example. Sure, it takes time to render out a full concept with colors, shading, lights, and materials, but that's not quite what concept artists do. Concept artists need to iterate quickly based on a specific need for the project that they're on. They need to consider all the art, the story, and the mechanics of the project, and then create concepts that fit within all those parameters. Whipping out a quick concept is a relatively quick task for concept artists. Same goes when it comes to modifying a design. Concept art has never been a bottleneck in a production, so there's no problem to solve here. No use for AI. The next argument is that AI learns to create images just like we do. We use references from life or other artists, so why can't AI do it too? Well, AI doesn't create art like we do, not even close. AI art is a combination of a series of words or a, you know, a prompt, a series of words, the resulting image, and a seed number. These three things together result in the image being generated. It's a recipe to create a particular image. If you use the same prompt and seed number, you'll be able to generate the exact same image again. Apparently, you can also reverse engineer this process and find the prompt if you have the seed number and the resulting image. It's just a mindless collage of pixels based on probabilities. Its limit will always be what it was trained on. It can never innovate. It can never create new styles, raise the overall level of art. Only humans can do that. We're conscious beings and we all see things differently based on our experience and our emotions. We can and always do evolve. Just look at the way that art has changed over the centuries. If we stopped creating new art to leave it up to AI, progress would stop as well. Art in 100 years in the future would be no different than it is today. And so saying AI art learns and creates the same way that we do is just profoundly not true. And we can't be compared that way. Now the next argument in favor of AI is that it's inevitably going to progress and be able to basically replace us. Therefore, we should fully embrace it and learn to adapt to it. I'd say this way of thinking is only right if we keep the technology as a tool, just like Photoshop has content aware tools that let you work faster. Left out of control though, it has the potential to do too much damage, damage that we might not even consider yet. I mentioned cloning earlier. Genetic engineering of humans to create designer babies is another example. Just because it's possible, just because the technology exists, doesn't mean we should use it. I'm sure you can think of many things that can lead to a good outcome for some, but are made illegal to maintain fairness for everyone. AI shouldn't be illegal, but its use should be heavily regulated in art and every other industry. Just embracing it regardless of the consequences is like telling the bank that they can do whatever they want with customer funds. The reason they can't is not for a lack of trying, it's because there are regulations in place, regulations that benefit the overall population. 
The next argument against AI generated art is more of an open question, I guess. How valuable is art when the author has no name? Writing the prompt for the image doesn't make you the artist, obviously, just the client, as if you asked an artist to draw you a commission. You just ask the AI and the AI did it for you. Now, there's a big problem when people start uploading AI generated art as their own. It's not much different than uploading someone else's art as your own. If nobody should do this with human made art, well, the same should go with AI art. Then I would ask, what good are these fully AI generated images if nobody can claim them as their own? Useless is what they are. Unless you're into fraud and try to scam people by fooling them into thinking that you did it. But that has never been acceptable and it should never be. Now, I think it should be fine to use AI created images as part of the art process as a tool, like I've said, just like someone using photo bashing to create a final concept, but never as the final result itself. For this last part of the video, I want to touch on the pros of AI art and what I think it will become in the future. Overall, like many, I think AI has a huge potential to help speed up some parts of our workflow as artists and generate a lot of interesting ideas as a brainstorming tool. Tools that bring value, tools that help us artists speed up our process and eliminate pains in our workflow should always, always be celebrated. The problem so far with AI art is that it's been used as a final product rather than as a tool. It's been seemingly trying to eliminate the entire process of creating art in some cases, solving a non-existent problem. Creating art is fun. It's fulfilling. Why would anyone try to automate the joy out of it? And I'll end with some quick suggestions or guidelines for artists when dealing with AI art. Hopefully guidelines that the large portfolio websites will hear and implement instead of focusing only on maximizing profits for the next quarter. First one, when sharing art online, just like when sharing studies of other people's art, or when tracing an image, or when the result is heavily inspired by the style of somebody else, do the right thing and disclose it. In this case, disclose it was done using AI art. Easy. Next, when it comes to fully AI generated images, these should have no place on any portfolio website. The third one, those same AI generated images should have no place in professional settings unless used merely as a tool, not the final result. And then generally speaking, from a moral standpoint, I think we would all be best to hold off on using any AI image generators for now until they are retrained on ethically sourced data. If the art community can agree on these or some variants of these, and if the AI companies get regulated as they should, I think AI will be a significant tool to help us elevate our art for decades to come. We're not there yet though. There's still a lot of work to do to get there. So please share this video with others who should hear this and try your best to educate others on the potential dangers. As a community, we'll be able to do this. We just gotta stick together like we always have. In the future, it'll be very cool to see how we can hopefully train our own AI models with our own art only, using our own content as the entire data set for the AI to learn from. That's what I hope this tech will lead us to. Artists shouldn't be replaced. We should instead be supported with greater and greater tools to unlock our full potential and keep pushing art forward. New technologies are always coming out. The art industry is always growing. There will be many new careers in 10 to 20 years from now that don't even exist yet, that we can't even imagine today. Being part of that as an artist is a much more exciting future than one where art stagnates, cursed by AI, left unchecked. And uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this week's class. Again, these are purely opinions. Don't hesitate to share your own in a civil manner down in the comments. By the way, if you've been drooling over how awesome my brush looks working on these drawings in the background, well, good news, you can get it for free as part of my full custom brush set with the link in the video description. Very epic. See you next week.